Ukraine's defense forces have shifted their focus from attacking refineries to targeting oil depots. This change, marked by regular fires at Russian oil depots in August, has raised questions about the strategic benefits of such a decision, according to Espresso TV. Alexander Kovalenko, a Ukrainian military and political observer with the Information Resistance Group, has delved into the issue. One notable example is the fire in Proletarsk, Rostov region, which burned for 10 days. But why move away from refineries after seemingly successful attacks? Let's explore the reasoning. Since late 2023, Ukrainian forces have consistently targeted Russian oil refineries, leading to temporary shutdowns and repairs. However, these refineries eventually resumed operations, which isn't surprising. A refinery operates like a small city, and disabling it for an extended period requires more than just a drone with 30 kilograms of explosives. While a drone can halt operations temporarily, it cannot cause long-term paralysis. In contrast, oil depots present a different and more vulnerable target. Ukraine now has kamikaze drones with a range of up to 2,500 kilometers, putting numerous Russian oil depots at risk. These depots, numbering in the hundreds and varying in size, operate a substantial number of storage tanks, over 2,550 before the strikes began. The key point is that Russia has a limited number of tanks, and rebuilding or replacing them takes much longer than repairing a refinery after a similar attack. Moreover, these strikes on oil depots are more impactful as the number of tanks decreases with each hit, and the effect is more severe than refinery attacks. The immediate visual impact of an oil depot attack, tanks engulfed in flames and black smoke visible for kilometers, is striking. For Ukrainians, it's a cause for satisfaction, while for the Russians, it's a source of shock, confusion and realization of the authorities' powerlessness. This is just one aspect. There are others worth noting. Firstly, the effectiveness of oil depot attacks lies in their efficiency. Secondly, the impact on the front line is significant. Thirdly, there's the issue of oil production. The critical point here is that if oil production stops at these mostly depleted fields, restoring them would be nearly impossible. Russia's oil fields are in a dire situation. Produce to the last drop or face collapse. Even when oil prices fell below $30 per barrel, Russian fields continued production at a loss, storing the excess in anticipation of better times. The destruction of these storage tanks, which are limited in number, could lead Russia to an oil crisis. The country might find itself with no storage facilities and no choice but to dump the oil back into the fields. Artillery still remains the main weapon of war in Ukraine. For its effective use, as well as to counter enemy artillery, a special artillery reconnaissance brigade was created in Ukraine. The commander of the 15th Artillery Reconnaissance Brigade, Black Forest, of Ukraine, Colonel Alexander Popov, told UP why such a special unit was needed. According to him, the understanding that the Ukrainian armed forces needed a separate artillery reconnaissance brigade arose around 2017, but then it was limited to just talk. Analyzing what happened during the active phase of the fighting in 2014 to 2015, we realized that we had very few resources that could saturate the missile forces and artillery units with information. At that time, there was still enough ammunition, but where to shoot? Not a single cannon or howitzer will fire until you tell it exactly where to shoot, Popov says. He noted that individual units had elements of artillery reconnaissance, but they worked specifically for their brigade, not for everyone. There was also a problem with the shortage of people who could analyze the information collected by the intelligence service. There were no analytical units in the military command and control bodies. They had to be created. Now in the missile forces and artillery, they are called artillery reconnaissance control points. They receive intelligence information, convert it into a convenient form. It needs to be sorted what is relevant, what is needed stroke not needed, in accordance with the task, conditions, and so on. And the people who do this work are on the staff of our 15th Artillery Reconnaissance Brigade, Popov explains. Although the idea for such a brigade dates back to 2017, it was not actually formed until 2022 during the first weeks of Russia's full-scale invasion. Now the brigade helps target everything from missile systems to frontline mortar crews. According to Popov, the problem with artillery reconnaissance before 2022 was that the old means did not allow detecting enemy guns until they started firing. 
Now we can detect it even at the advanced stage. And this is really very cool. It's a fantastic story. And this is a very important change. Previously, artillery reconnaissance was aimed at identifying enemy artillery weapons. Large scale warfare has shown that this is not enough. Now we are not limited to just enemy guns or artillery reconnaissance weapons. We are able to identify the full range of elements of the enemy's combat order on the battlefield, starting with electronic warfare, elements of the air defense system, command posts, fire destruction systems, which include artillery, enemy manpower. In short, everything that is not on the battlefield. The brigade commander says, According to the officer, artillery reconnaissance uses not only drones, but also other technical means. The drones detect only a part and more often perform the task of additional reconnaissance, refining the coordinates obtained by other technical means that our unit has. That is, the drone flies to confirm the target. The military man explained, well, in Popov's opinion, today even the armies of NATO countries can learn a thing or two from the Ukrainian armed forces.